the Weibo Taco is a good way to go um, when you are making solutions. Um, here's this and other tips you should know. Um, and so basically a Weibo Taco, I like to call it, is you have this whey paper and when you're weighing out a solid, then you, if you fold it in half first, um, now you can be weighing on here and just go and directly transfer it into your beaker with liquid. Um, what I like to do too is take um, a water squirt bottle, make sure it's the like purified water, the same water that you're making your solution in. And then you can use this um, to spray in, to squirt in and kind of get the excess liquid off into the solution. So you could do it like that or you could also do it if you are using a whey boat um, and use the water to squirt it off. Um, speaking of water when you are dissolving things in water you want to put the water in there first um at least some of the water and then add the solid to it um so some people like to do the weighing in the beaker but i don't like to do that because then when you go to add the water what's going to happen is that the water goes on and basically everything just kind of like clumps into this giant clump now you have this giant clump and it's not going to dissolve and it's gonna like inhibit the stir bar and all sorts of problems. So yesterday I was making the solution and even though I put the, some liquid in there first, then I got the stir bar, it like all clumped up and the stir bar actually got stuck and I had to like bang it out. But anyway, we'll get more to, to what to do with your things get crushed in there. So when you're making a solution, you weigh out how much you need and we'll get into this in a second. But once you weigh out how much you need for a given volume, you're going to need to dissolve it in the liquid to make it to that volume. But first, you want to make, that's going to be your final volume. So say you want to make a liter of solution, or say you want to make 250 uh, or 200 or whatever mils of a solution. That's your final volume. So you have to take into account the volume of anything that you add. So sometimes you add just a little bit of something, it's not going to take up a lot of space. But if you add a whole bunch of these solids, um, then it's going to start, it, I mean, that adds bulk. Um, and so then that's going to take up liquid. So if you were to measure out the amount of liquid that you needed beforehand and then pour that in and then put your add your stuff, well, now you're gonna go above the volume that you needed, and then there are ways to rescue it, um, but basically then you have to make extra volume, and then you have to add more of your stuff, and it's just like, no, duh, don't do that. Um, instead, you want to add to like, typically like three quarters or so of the volume, depends on what you're adding. So take into account like, okay, well, am I adding a lot or am I adding a little? Um, if you're adding a lot of something, then you want to leave more space. Remember, you're always going to be adding the volume anyway, um, and so it's better to be safe than sorry, and don't overshoot things. Um, especially also if you're have to, going to have to pH adjust, you have to leave room um, to allow for that pH adjustment. Also remember, because the lines on the um, graduate on the beakers are only exact, don't trust them. Like if you go to that line, you might actually be above. Um, so be careful with that. You also want to allow room for like rinsing any of the extra stuff off. So whether it's like your taco that we were talking about before, or whether it's after you pour out of your bottle into your graduate, your um, beaker into your graduated cylinder um, to measure, because remember these lines are approximate. These lines are what you actually measure with. And remember to go from the bottom of the meniscus. So look for the smile and go to the bottom of the line. That's where the, the measuring level is. So when you're making a solution, you're gonna be making it in like a beaker. So you stick your stir bar into the beaker and a little bit of liquid and then add your solid to that. And you're gonna be adding about, remember about like three quarters or so for most things of the liquid. Now when you go and you add your solid, you can rinse off into here when you add um, your liquid out of here and into your beaker, then you can be rinsing off with your bottle into the beaker, to, into, or sorry, into the cylinder, then you can be washing off um, into the cylinder as well. When you go to do that, when you go to transfer from the beaker to the cylinder, make sure that you're removing the stir bar first or at least you're holding it on the outside. So you can remove the stir bar with like a stir magnet, a uh, fissure type thing. If you don't have one of these, or if you can't, you just don't want to go walk and get one, you can take a big magnet. It doesn't have to be this big, but oh my gosh, this is a huge magnet. Um, and hold it on the outside um, and then pour off. And then remember that you're going to want to wash and make sure you get everything off into your 
um, graduated cylinder. When you're going into the graduated cylinder, try to avoid getting stuff stuck on the edges, um, stuck around here, because then that's not going to be contributing to your volume. So I highly recommend that if you're making a solution, you look like a stock solution, you look in the recipes that have been posted like online or in a protocol or that sort of thing to see if there are any special notes you should take into account. Um, for example, um, Sometimes you're trying and trying and trying to get something to dissolve and you're like, why isn't this dissolving? And then you go and you look at the recipe and oh, you need to adjust the pH. A common place this comes up in biochemistry is EDTA. So EDTA isn't going to dissolve very well unless you're at a pH of like eight or above. So when you're making a solution of EDTA, first of all, start with like the sodium salt so it's going to dissolve a lot better. And then also you're going to be adding NaOH um, to help get it to dissolve. If things still aren't dissolving very well, um, then you can add a little heat sometimes, um, but make sure your reaction isn't exothermic. So if your reaction is exothermic, that means it gives off heat. So if you're adding heat, you're gonna be like inhibiting the dissolving. If it's endothermic, so basically if you feel it and it's cold, that means it's taking in heat um, to dissolve. And so if you add some heat, you might be able to help it dissolve better. You're also giving the molecules like more time to bang into the solid and that sort of thing. Speaking of which, stirring, stirring, stirring. I was super duper excited because I came in this morning and my solution was finally dissolved. Yesterday it looked like milk. Um, today it actually looks like a liquid. Um, it's just some like media stuff for some bacterial expression that I'm gonna do some like auto inductions and cool stuff like that. Um, but anyway, it was dissolved and I was really happy. Um, and so stir bar to the rescue. Um, stir bar. Uh, stirring plate. Make sure you put the stir bar in there. I know this is really like it should be really simple But you have no idea how many times you're like, why isn't this stirring? And then you realize there's no stir bar in there So yeah, watch your stir bar. For smaller things you can use some sort of a uh, rotator shaker or a nutator or that sort of thing to spin For those of you just like stick it in a falcon tube or eppendorf tube, whatever the size of your thing is um, speaking of your things, you want to also check the recipe to make sure there are, look if there are any storage conditions you should know, um, as well as any post, uh, like any purification steps or sterilization steps. So do you need to filter syringe it? Do you need to vacuum syringe it? Well, that's, I mean, like those are just going to depend on your volume. Do you need to, um, autoclave it? various things um, for the different things. Basically anything that you're going to be putting in bacteria or bacteria in or like bacterial media type of stuff, you're gonna to want to sterilize it either with um, like a 0.2 uh, micron filter or with like an autoclave. Um, so some solute things aren't autoclavable though, so make sure that you are checking with like the recipe and stuff. Also, make sure you look and you see if it needs to be stored at, in the freezer, in the fridge, do you need to cover it with foil? Is it light sensitive? Um, various things like this that you can then find in that recipe. When you're weighing out the solids, so it's hard enough to get things to dissolve when they're actually like the little powdery form. But if they're like a big clump, well now there's like, hopeless. Okay, well, it's not like hopeless, but it's not good. So first of all, you want to prevent these clumps from forming in the first place, which is why you should always close the bottles really, really tightly. So if you're weighing things out, don't just leave the bottles open and then go walk over to your bench and like do your calculation. Now you want to leave those bottles closed as much as possible because when like the water molecules from the air get in there, then they're going to make things clumpy. When things are clumpy, it's going to be really, really hard to dissolve because basically when, when, things dissolve, basically every little molecule of them has to get a coat of water. If all the water sees is the outside of this big clump, there's less opportunities for the water to be dealing with things. Um, so you want to give the water the most opportunities to interact with, um, with the solid that you're trying to dissolve. So avoid the clumps in the first place. If you can't avoid the clumps, at least declump them before you like put them in your liquid. Um, and so easiest is just like spatula you just jam it but be careful you're not like jamming your finger um you can also use like a glass rod and if all else fails mortar and pistol which i had to resort to yesterday uh with some of the salts that i was using which i don't think anyone's used for like a decade or so um but anyway so crush things up first so that they have a better chance to dissolve um a colleague yesterday gave me a cool tip too because i was having trouble i'm like why isn't this dissolving i can't even crush it any further um put it in like a sonicator bath um for a little um and give it a little zap and that could help um get the clumps so thanks jordan for that another tip um if you have 
solids, a lot of solids you need to dissolve. It can be helpful to dissolve it a bit at a time. Um, so let it start dissolving, um, then pour some in, let it keep dissolving, then pour some in, let it keep dissolving, um, then pour some in. Um, and that can be helpful. But when you're making a solution, you want to weigh out how much you need of the thing. And this is going to depend on the molecular weight or the formula weight of the thing. So molecular weight, um, that's going to be, um, we, sometimes these terms can be used interchangeably, but technically a molecular weight, that's for like a single molecule. So something that's like by itself um, without any sort of other molecules by it, without any counter ions or that sort of thing. So like uh, sodium chloride, those are two different molecules. Um, so you would have like a formula weight where it's like one unit. Um, and so more on this in another post, I'm not going to get into it, but when you're talking about concentration, we're talking, typically talking about terms of molarity when we're making the solutions. And so the formula weight is going to tell you the number of grams per mole. So like 119 gram, 0.98 grams per mole for sodium phosphate monobasic, which brings me to a point I wanted to bring up is that you need to make sure that you're using the right thing that your formula calls for. This can be really um, confusing when it comes to like sodium phosphate monobasic basic and sodium phosphate dibasic. So for the monobasic, um, you have H2NaPO4 and for the dibasic, you have HNA2PO4. And so you want to make sure that you're using the right one. Speaking of right run, sometimes these solids come as like a hydrate. So they have like water molecules like hanging out with them. Um, so you might see like heptahydrate and this sort of thing. What's going to happen is that the water molecules, they're going to add to your formula weight. So if the calculation that you're seeing in a recipe was for like the non-hydrate form, or maybe it was for a different hydrate form, that's going to have a different formula weight. So you need to look at the bottle to make sure that you're getting the right formula weight so that say if you have a heptahydrate, you're taking into account those like seven water molecules that are associating with your molecule. And the formula weight is going to take into that into account account so that you know how to measure out more moles um, and or more grams to get the same number of moles of the part that you care about. Um, and so this is something um, that you want to make sure you're looking at um, if you're going from a recipe that you say found online. So I hope that helps you um, with your solution making and happy recipe baking. <laughs>